Look, I know what you're thinking. You clicked on a Supermoto video from that guy who shouts about turbo boosts and has a gender bender anime version of himself hanging on the wall of his office. And no, this is not going to be an 11 minute video making fun of Kyle's. There, are you happy now, Kyle? Are you done crushing monsters and punching drywall, Kyle? Are you capable of being a stable human being who can keep both wheels on the ground, Kyle? Of course not. That's why you bought a Supermoto. You want to crack wheelies and do hood rat stuff with your friends? Friends. Well, you have chosen wisely, my young squid. The Supermoto platform is an unending font of good times. Whether you pull a spite and buy a broken DRZ400 that never works, or you pull a spite and buy a brand new SMCR with all the fancy gadgets you would expect from a Eurobike manufacturer. But while Supermotos have a reputation of being the kind of motorcycle you see on those YouTube videos where the rider pops a wheelie and then flips off cops as they chase him through a school zone, they actually have a fairly rich history and they're more complex than you might think. So on today's So You Want a Blank Bike video, we're breaking down the entire class of Supermotos, just for you, Kyle. But before we do, god damn have you got some scraggly pubes my dude they're so bad that I can see them ripping through the script that I'm reading right now your pubes are so bad that they're literally punching a hole through space and time and boring it straight into the minds of all the poor people watching this video right now and no it's not because I'm talking about them right now it's causing people to think of a dude with a mop on his groin what is, what is even going on anymore listen it's manscape my dude there's only one company that makes a trimmer powerful enough to defoliate that pube jungle but delicate enough not to cut your balls that's right the lawnmower 3.0, the only yammy new but proved ball shaver on earth. But the goodies don't stop there. You can get the weed whacker and clean your nose out in seconds. The Shears 2.0 so you can give yourself a lovely little manicure and more ball deodorants and soaps than you can shake a stick at. Click the link down below and use the code YAMMY for 20% off your order and free shipping. Now, what if I told you that Supermoto motorcycles were created solely to compete in a TV show? Some entertainment power hour where people raced funny looking dirt bikes all across different terrains in order to see who was the King Kyle ever to reign from his throne of lukewarm Mountain Dew Code Red and crushed Monster Energy drink cans. Well, it's true. Back in the 1970s, there was a show on ABC called The Wild World of Sports, and apparently it was the highest rated sports show in the US. Which means back in the 70s, people spent more time watching sports other than football. Oh, how far we've fallen. But anyway, in 1979, they commissioned an event called Super Bikers and hired a motorcycle journalist named Gavin Tripp to create a race that would combine all elements of motorcycle racing into one massive track. The point was to bring in riders from all different disciplines of riding, from road racing to motocross to flat tracking, and have them fight to the death for your viewing pleasure. Okay, so maybe they didn't fight to the death, but they did race around on a track divided into the three sections. The biggest section was an asphalt track, followed by a motocross track with jumps and whoops, and finally a dirt section for maximum skiddies. This diverse track needed a specific kind of motorcycle that didn't really exist yet, so contestants opted for two-stroke dirt bikes because of their off-road and jumping ability, and then they added different wheels and brakes so that they could handle the road section more effectively. And lo and behold, the Supermoto was born. People loved Super Bikers so much that it was a Nielsen rating hit almost overnight up until its cancellation in 1985. Then like the tide, Supermoto popularity ebbed into the European abyss where all things go one day. Until the 2000s when sumo racing suddenly exploded in popularity again. We're in another cycle of ebbing popularity which means that in a few more years we're gonna have a bunch of insufferable hipster Kyles saying they loved Supermoto racing all along and that you only like it now because it's popular. But Papa Yams, I'm watching this video so you can tell me that I made the right call when I bought my Supermoto. I desperately need you to validate my opinions. Please tell me that buying this clapped out 250 conversion was the best choice. I need something to justify having to do my valves every time I ride this death trap. Well, my young squid, this is one of those rare times where I'm not going to tell you that you've made a horrible mistake, but only if you bought your converted 250 or 450 for racing. You see, there's two routes you can go with if you want a Supermoto. You can either buy one new from the factory, in which case your options are very limited, or you buy any one of the 10,000 different dirt bikes out there and convert it. Now I'm going to say this again slowly so you can take notes. Are you ready? Because this is important. You should only convert a Supermoto if you are racing it. 
Why? Because conversions are a gigantic pain in the butt. First things first, you need to pick the right dirt bike or dual sport. Most people just go for the 450 because they're spec sheet warriors who don't understand just how much work 450s are. To give you an idea, the Honda CRF 450R says to adjust the valves every 15 hours or 6 races. If you don't do that, then the bike will perform worse and worse until you cook a valve or the bike won't start. There's a cause to all that power. Just saying. But if you don't heed my warnings and want to rip a 450 on the street because you want to get a bunch of reckless riding tickets, what are you going to need? Well, first off, you're going to need a set of 17 inch rims. That'll set you back a good five to $800 if you get a nice set. You'll need fresh rubber, so we'll call that 300 bucks. Then you'll likely need to get yourself new brake rotors, caliper mounts, or even new calipers depending on your motorcycle. I'm just gonna throw this one out there and call it $300 for a good set of calipers, fresh rotors, and mounting brackets. It could be more or less, it depends. Now, if you wanna do it right, you're gonna need to recalibrate the speedometer and tachometer, which on a lot of dual sports reads off the front wheel. Since you're going down in diameter, the speedo will read higher than it actually is. If a speedo healer fits your bike, that's another $100 or more likely you need to get in and do the recalibration manually. Next, you need lights because you're at least going to try to pass inspection, which means tail light, license plate light, turn signals, headlight, high beam, and turn signal switches, and don't you just wish you bought a bike from the factory at this point. Now look, yes, a converted supermoto is lighter, faster, more powerful, and in some cases a bit cheaper, but not only are they more expensive to maintain in the long run, they're not going to live as long as something like, say, a DRZ 400 SM, which you can buy on Craigslist in good running order for $4,000, and along with some cockroaches, the DRZ 400 will be the only thing to survive the nuclear Armageddon. When the inevitable heat death of the universe comes, the last light will be a DRZ400 that's just run out of gas. They're basically unkillable if you maintain it, and they're just as capable of cracking dank nooners as any other motorcycle. So long story short, don't convert a supermoto unless you really want to go racing with it. Papa Yams! I have a question for you. My buddy's uncle's stepson's new mama's boyfriend converted a 450, and he went to jail because of unpaid reckless riding tickets. Can I buy that one? No. You can't. Actually, I can't stop you, but you shouldn't. You should never buy a conversion because who knows if the work was done right or put together by some half-drunk, ten-thumbed hillbilly. Only ever buy a conversion if you personally know the guy who converted it and know that he can actually turn a wrench. Bonus points if he has the service records. Okay, now that I've dashed all of your hopes and dreams for converting a supermoto, let's talk about the factory options you can buy. And unfortunately, they're pretty far and few in between right now. If you want a supermoto from Japan, the only choice is the DRZ400SM. The DRZ400 is a very old motorcycle that first came out in 1999 and has basically never changed. The SM model was released in 2005 and features the same dependable 398cc liquid-cooled thumper motor, putting out 40 horse and 29 foot-pounds of torque. It's got a 5-speed transmission, which means that it's top speed is not great, topping at about 90 miles per hour in stock form. In keeping with Supermoto law, it has 17 inch rims, a big single 300 brake rotor, and it weighs in at 320 pounds wet and ready to ride. The main issue with the DRZ is that it's carbureted, which means that it requires a little bit more effort to maintain than some other factory options, but it's also a little easier to modify as a result. Some key mods to the DRZ include a bigger flat slide carb since it uses a 36 mil from the factory, a new air filter, and cutting 3 inch by 3 inch hole in the top of the airbox to allow the bike to breathe a little bit better, commonly known as the breather mod or airbox mod. Also, you must use the FMF exhaust with FMF power core headers and the FMF branded tidy whities to make peak power. A brand new DRZ 400 SM can be had for 7,399 bucks, and because it's basically a dual sport, it costs like a nickel to insure every year. Now I know that aspiring fast boys who are tall and don't fit on a little 300 or 400 cc sport bike aren't going to want to hear this, but the DRZ 400 SM is actually a great place to start. It's got a 35 inch seat height and really comfy and roomy ergo, so you're going to have way more comfortable on this. But what if you want a sumo with a little bit more panache, a little je ne sais quoi? Well, the other option for a factory supermoto is the KTM slash Husqvarna 690 platforms. They're basically the same motorcycle, so pick the one that looks nicest to you and then go through online and argue for your preferred brand. But the KTM LC4 engine in these bikes makes 74 horsepower and 54 foot-pounds of torque from its 690cc single. It weighs in at 360 pounds, it has a 6-axis IMU, lean-sensitive ABS, traction control, wheelie control for some reason, rider modes, and a bi-directional quick shifter. This is 100% not a bike that you should or can start on, even though it makes the same power as a 650. The single is a real handful, and it pulls really 
extremely hard thanks to its low weight. It's also pretty pricey at $11,799 brand new. You could also go look at the Ducati Hyper Motard, and although it sits like a supermoto, it's kind of more like a super light naked Panigale, featuring the same engine, the same dash, the same clusters, and a classic Italian price tag of $13,395 for the base model and upwards of $18,000 for the full bananas version. In years past as well, Yamaha made a WR250X based on their WR250R dual sport motorcycle. They don't make the X model anymore, but you can still find some used floating around. Husqvarna is also more than happy to sell you race-ready supermotos that have slicks, insanely hopped up engines, and super light weights, but I assume since you're looking at this video, you probably want to stick to a street model, and if you're looking at buying a race-prepped supermoto from the dealership floor, you're probably not watching this video anyways. Regardless of which platform you choose, supermotors are basically the perfect street motorcycle. They make more than enough power for the street and the track if you choose so, they're great on a twisty road, they're light and cheap to run, and if you want, you can take them off-road simply with a new set of rubber. In terms of an everyday motorcycle, a supermoto is basically perfect. So yes, you did make the right call in getting a supermoto, my dude, Kyle. And in case it wasn't obvious, supermoto is the light, it is the way, my child. All riders tend towards the sumo. So my sweet little squid, this video is actually over, but lucky for you, click on this one right here, you can keep watching your sweet Papa Yam, delivering you the motorcycle content you've come to know and love. Don't worry, I'll wait. I'll be here waiting for you. You're going to click on that video.